everybody, and well, welcome to Richard III. I'm Mae Jo Johnson. I've been attending the Gamma Summer Intensive for the past three years. This year being my final before I go off to college. And um, all I can say um, from a, about these past three years here at GSI is that the program offers nothing but wonderful and amazing experiences and opportunities for students to not only own their craft in Shakespeare performance behind scenes and uh, marketing and element and just many other things um, as well as just growing as a person, it, um, they get to put on two Shakespeare production plays uh, in four weeks, which is pretty amazing. And uh, this amazing gift wouldn't be possible uh, without the damn scholarship. Uh, so there's a jar in the lobby to put donations into so we can keep funding this amazing and wonderful program for years to come. Uh, if you ask keeping rules, there is an exit behind this white curtain. Um, and then, <laughs> very slow thought today. And then, one from where you came. And, oh, anything that could distract you, including cell phones, cameras, pagers, tablets, what have you, please turn them off. They're very distracting to the actors, and just, well, scientific studies have shown that you can live two hours without texting your best friend to be a selfie in Also, any snack or candy that could be in a wrapper that you choose to unwrap in the middle of a performance, please do that now, even if you choose not to enjoy it at the moment. Um, just do not take away the enjoyment of the performance from fellow audience members and also just be courteous to the actors. Um, and if you choose not to obey any of these rules, Richard or one of the murders, Therefore, 
therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous by drunken prophecies, libels and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate. The one against the other. But dies thoughts. Down to my soul, here Clarence comes. Brother, the day, what means this armored guard that waits upon your grace? His Majesty, hindering my person's safety, have appointed this conduct to convey me to the tower. On what cause? Because my name is George. Alack, my lord, that fault is none of yours. He should for that commit your godfathers. But what's the matter, Clarence? May I know? Harkens after prophecies and dreams. It says that a wizard told that by G this issue disinherited should be. And for my name George begins with G, it follows in this thought that I am he. Alas, this is it is your men are ruled by women. Tis not the king that sends you to the tower, my lady Grey, his wife, the queen, to she that tempers him to this extremity. We are not safe, Clarence, we are not safe. I he beseech your grace is both party. His majesty has strictly charged that no man shall have private conference of what we are the queen's abjects and must obey. Father, farewell. I will into the king meantime this deep disgrace in brotherhood touches me deeper than you can imagine. Meantime, have patience. I must break.
but do you tremble? Are you all afraid? Alas, I blame you not, for you are mortal, and mortal eyes cannot endure the devil. Oh, I wish that death. 
I will not be the executioner. Bid me kill myself and I will do it! Have already! Touch that was in my rage! Speak it again! Even with the word, that hand which for thy love did kill thy love shall for thy love kill a far truer love. To both their deaths shall thou be accessory. I would I knew thy heart.
To whom in all those presence speaks your grace? To thee that hath nor honesty nor grace. When have I injured thee? When done thee wrong? Or thee, or thee, or any of your perfection? A plague upon you all, his royal presence, whom God preserved better than you would wish, cannot be quiet, scarce a breath, but you must trouble him with lewd complaint. Brother of Blossom, you do mistake the matter. The king alone, not provoked by any else, has sent for you, that he may come to know the ground for your ill will against my kindred brothers and myself, and so remove it. I cannot tell. The world has grown so bad that red. Rivers and Dorset. 
you were satisfied, and so was thou, Lord, hasten, when my son was sad, blood attacked. God, I pray him that none of you may reach your natural age, but by some unlooked accident, cut off. Have done your charm, hateful wither hag. And leave out thee? Say, dog, for thou shalt hear me. The worm of conscience still gnaw thy soul. Thy friends suspect for traitors while thou livest, and take deep traitors in thy heart for thy dearest friends. No sleep, close up that deadly eye of thine, lest it be while some tormenting dream of fright you with a hell of ugly devils. Thou son of hell, and slave of nature, thou rag of honor, thou detestin' Margaret. Richard, huh? I call thee not. Oh, I cry thee mercy then, for I thought thou callest me on this bitter name. Why, so I did, but look for no reply. Oh, let me make a period to my curse. This is done by me, and ends in Margaret. Thus have you breathed your curse against yourself. Poor painted queen, vain to flourish of my fortune. Place yourself sugar upon that bottled spider, whose deadly web do snap thee about. Fool, fool, thou wast denied to kill thyself. Time come when you shall wish for me to help thee curse that poisonous bunch fat toad. False morning woman, and thy friend to curse, lest to thy harm thou move our patience. Worthy well served will be taught to duty. Dispute not with her, she is a lunatic. Peace, Master Marquis, you are a malapert. Your fire may stand modern, scarce current. They that stand high have blue blasts to shake them, and if they fall, they dash themselves to peace. Peace! How done! How done! Oh, princely Buckingham, I'll kiss thy hand and sign a league and amity with thee. Thy garments are not spotted with my blood, nor thou within the compass of our curse. O oh, Buckingham, take heed of yonder dog. Look when he fawns, he bites, and when he bites, his venom tooth will rankle to the death. Have not to do with him. Beware of him, for sin, death, and hell have set their marks on him, and all their ministers attend on him. What does she say, my lord of Buckingham? that I respect, my gracious lord. What? Dost thou scorn me for my gentle counsel and soothe the devil that I warn thee from? Oh, but remember this another day, when he shall split your very heart with sorrow and say poor Margaret was a prophetess. Leave each of you subject to his hate, and he be yours and all of you to God. My hair doth stand on ends here her curses. And so do mine. I use what she said liberty. I cannot blame her. By God's holy mother, she has had too much wrong, and I repent my part thereof that I have done to her. I never did her any to my knowledge. But you have all the advantage of her wrong. I was too hot to be somebody good that is too cold in thinking of it now. As for Clarence, he is well repaid. God pardon them, that all cause it. What a virtuously Christian like conclusion to pray for those that have done escape to us. Hands and not our tongue. Your eyes drop a millstone. 
stones and fools eyes drop tears. I like you, lads. Now back your business straight. Go, go, dispatch, you hold my noble work. Of my death. 
you are deceived. Your brother lost her hate scene. Oh. No. <laughs> he loves me and holds me dear. Go you to him from me. Ah, so we will. Tell him, when that our princely father your blessed his three sons with his victorious arm and charged us from his soul to love each other, he little thought in this divided friendship. Did Foster think on this, and he will be. Ah, millstones, as he lessened us to weep. Oh, do not slander him, for he is kind. It is he that sent us hither now to slaughter thee. It cannot be. For he bewept my fortune, hugged me in his arms, and swore with sovereign he would labor my delivery. Why, so he doth, when he delivers your soul from this earth's problems to the joys of heaven. Have you that holy feeling in your souls to counsel me to make my peace with God? And are you yet to your own soul so blind that you will war with God by murdering me? What should we do? Relent <laughs> and save your souls. Relent? No. Tis cowardly and womanish. Not to relent is beastly, savage, devilish. My friend, I spy some beauty in thy books. Come thou on my side. Oh, my Who knows not he is dead? Who knows he is? Well, Stephen, what a world is this? 
order was reversed. But he, poor man, by the <coughs> first order, died. My brother killed no man. His fault was thought. And yet his punishment was bitter death. Who spoke of brotherhood? Who spoke of love? Who told me in the field at Tewksbury, when Oxford had me down, he rescued me and said, Dear brother, live and be a king. Who told me when we both lay in the field, frozen almost to death, how he did laugh? Even in his garments, I did give himself all thin and naked to the numb, cold night. All this, from my remembrance, brutish wrath, sinfully plucked, and not a man of you had so much grace to put in my mind. None of you would want to thank for his life, nor I, ungracious, speak unto myself for him, poor soul. Oh God, I fear thy justice will take hold on me, and you, and mine, and yours for this. Oh, poor Clarence. This is the fruit of rashness. Marked you not how the guilty kindred of the queen looked pale when they did hear of Clarence's death? Oh, they did urge it still unto the king. God will avenge it. My lords, will you go to comfort Edward with our company? We wait upon your grace. So, 
my young gentleman. It is good to grow. Granddad, one night as we did sit at supper, my uncle Rivers talked about how I'd grow more than my brother. I, quoth my uncle Gloucester, small herbs have grace, great weeds grow apace. <laughs> Murder. I fear no 
my uncle's dead. No, none of them live, I hope. And if they live, I hope I need not fear. But come, my lord, and with a heavy heart, thinking on them, go I unto the tower. Yeah. 
now. Thank you, but that I know our state's secure, I would be so triumphant as I am. The blood that conquered when they go from London, where John can't suppose their state will share, and they indeed have a cause to mistrust, but yet you see how soon the day will pass. Come, come, have with me. The more you talk about beheaded. The sun is that I break on this cell. Pray God, I say, I do need this power. What, shall we put the power? I going now. I just stay dinner there. Supper too, although that one is not. <laughs> Come, bring forth the prisoners. God keep the prince from all the pack of you, and not you are damn blood suckers. You look at that shark car boat for this afternoon. Dispatch. The limited road lies out. Oh, Pomfrey.
dispatch my lord, the duke would be at dinner. Make a short shrift, he longs to see your end. Oh, bloody Richard, miserable England! I prophesy the fearfulest time to me that ever wretched age had looked upon. Grace to visit him tomorrow or the next day. He is the 
finally bent to his meditation. If I don't poorly suit, where do you move to draw him from this holy exercise? Oh, return good Kate speak to the Lord again. Tell him myself, the mayor, and my citizens are come to have some confidence in this race. I'll tell him what you say. Oh, my lord, this prince is not an Edward. He is not lolling on a lewd love bed, but on his knees in meditation. Not sleeping to engross his idle body, but praying to enrich his watchful soul. <laughs> Happy were England with this virtuous prince sing on himself the sovereignty thereof. But sure I fear we shall never win to it. Very comfort is great, say us nay. Yet I fear he will. How now, Prince what says your lord? My lord, he wonders to what end he have assembled such troops of citizens to come to me. His grace not being more thereof before. He fears, my lord, that he will no way to him. Sorry, I am, my noble cousin should suspect me that I mean no good to him. By heaven, we come to him in perfect love. And so, once more, return and tell his grace. When the holy and the devout religious men are at their beads, his heart is all nuts. So sweet and zealous contemplation. Sing a book prayer in his hands. True ordinance to know a holy man. <laughs> Most gracious prince, lend favorable ears to our requests and pardon us we interrupt thy prayers. My lord, there needs no such apology. I do beseech you pardon me, who earnest in the service of my God neglect the visitation of my friends. But leaving this, what is your grace's pleasure? Even that I hope which pleaseth God above and all good men in this ungodly God. I do suspect I have done some offense that seems disgracious in this city as I and that you come to reprehend.
taken out my oath. Therefore, pardon me. Two deep enemies 
soon, already from the fear of them. Sing it, sweet music. Say that it is done, and I shall love thee in the comfort before. I will dispatch it straight. My lord, I have considered in my mind the late man you would sound me. Well, let that rest. Your sin is fled to rich men. I hear that news, my lord. Stanley, he is your wife's son, well. To it. My lord, I claim the gift, my due by promise, the earldom of Hereford, and the movables that Bye. 
two sons. Wherein dost thou joy? Who sues and kneels and says, God save the queen? Where are the bending peers that flattered thee? Where are the thronging troops that followed thee? Deprived of all this, see thyself now for what thou art. For a happy wife, a most distressed widow. For a joyful mother, one who wails the name. For she feared God, now fearing one. For she commanding all, now obeyed of none. I said you would usurp my place. If you not now, usurp the just proportion of my sorrow. Farewell, York's wife, and queen of sad mischance. These English wolves will make you smile. Well, thou wilt kill the curses, stay a while, and teach me how to curse my enemies. Forbear to sleep the nights, and fast the days. Compare dead happiness with living woe. Think thy babes fairer than they were, and he that slew them fouler than he is. Better thy loss will make the bad cause the worse. Revolving this will teach thee how to curse. Why should you be full of Choose but hate thee, having bought love such a 
bloody spoils. Look, what is done cannot now be amended. If I take the kingdom from your sons to make amends, I'll give it to your daughter. If I can kill the issue of your womb to quicken your increase, I will beget my issue of your blood upon your daughter. Your children were a vexation to your youth, but mine shall be a comfort to your age. The loss you have is but a son being king, but by that loss your daughter is made queen. I cannot make amends I would, therefore, accept such kindness as I can. What were it best to say? Her father's brother would be her lord? Or shall I say her uncle? Or he that slew her brothers and her uncles under what title shall I move to the that can see pleasing to her tender years? Say that I love her everlastingly, but how long shall that title ever last? Sweetly and force likes of it. Be eloquent in my behalf to her. An honest tale speaks best being plainly told. Then plainly to her tell my loving tale. Plain and not honest is too harsh a style. Your reasons are too shallow and too quick. Oh, my reasons are too deep and dead, too deep and dead for infants in their graves. Are not on that string, madam, that is past. Her one still shall I till heart strings break. Now I my George, my garter, and my crown, I swear. If thou would be believed, swear by something that thou hast not wronged. No, by the world! Tis full of thy foul wrongs. By myself, self is so misused. My father's death, thy life hath dishonored it. Why then, by God? God's wrong is most of all. If thou hast feared to break an oath by him, the unity the king my husband made, thou hast not broken. Both <coughs> here. If thou hast feared to break the unity by him, the imperial metal thou circling thy head would have traced the tender temples of my child. Both the princes breathing here, where in the dust they are made play for words. What canst thou swear by now? The time to come! As I intend, you prosper and repent, so for I and I in my dangerous affair. In her consists my happiness and thine. Without her follows to myself, and you, the land, herself, and many a Christian soul, death, desolation, ruin, and decay. It cannot be avoided but by this. It will not be avoided but by this. Therefore, dear mother, I must call you so. Urge what I have been, not what I will be. Urge the necessity and state of times. Shall I go win my daughter to thy will? Be made a happy mother by the deed. I go. Write to me shortly, and thou shalt know her mind from me. Bid her my true love's kiss. And so farewell, relenting fool, and shall a changing woman. How now, what news? Mighty summer. On the western coast, right out the poison navy. Stop the bridge. Is their admiral, and there they halt, expecting about the aid of Buckingham to welcome them ashore. How now, Sally? What do you see? None of them, my liege, please be with the hearing. Nor none so bad will long be reported. Richmond is on the seas. There, let them sink and be the seas on him. Why, you little renegade, what shall help you there? Stood up by Dorset, begging him in Ely, he makes for England here to claim the crown. Is the king dead? The empire unpossessed? What heir of York is there alive but me? And who is England's king but great? I'm 
not in Dr. Church, or Edward Courtney, and the Bishop of Exeter, but many more Confederates are in arms. In Kent, my liege, the Guildfords are in arms, and every hour more competitors flock to the rebels, and their power grows strong. My lord, the great army of Buckingham! Out on me, owls! Nothing but songs of death! March on! March on! Since we are up in arms, and not to fight with foreign enemies, but to beat down the rebels here at home! A royal battle might be won, and lost. Someone take order, Buckingham be brought to Salisbury. The rest, march on with me! Aye, by proxy. Bless me for my mother, who prays continually 
evening for Richmond is good. Prepared by battle, early in the morning, I, as I am, that which I would, I cannot. But the best I did is to aid me in the selfish arms. But on your side, I may not be too forward. Let's be seen, your brother turned to George, the executor in his father's sight. Farewell. God give us leisure for these rites of love. Once more, do. Good lords, conduct him to his regiment. I'll strive once more to trouble the thoughts to take it out. Once more, good night, kind lords and gentlemen. Let me sit heavy in thy soul tomorrow, for, Clarence, by thy guile betrayed to death, tomorrow in the battle think on me and fall thy edge the sword. Despair and die! The offspring of the house of Lancaster, the wrong and heirs of York, do pray for thee. Good angels guard thy battle. Live and flourish. Let me sit heavy in thy soul tomorrow. Rivers that died at Pomfret, despair and die. Think on Gray and let thy soul despair. Awake and think our wrongs on Richard's bosom will conquer him. Awake and win the day. <gasps> Dream on thy cousin smothered in the tower. Let us be led within thy bosom, Richard, and weigh thee down to ruin, shame, and death. Thy nephew's soul bid thee despair and die.
say amen to all. But tell me, is George standing with you? He is, my Lord. What men are slain on either side? Enter their bodies as given their births. Proclaim a pardon to the soldiers fled, and in submission shall return to us. And then, as we have taken the sacraments, we will unite the white rose with the red. What traitor hears me and says not Amen? Oh, Which means Elizabeth, who true succeeders of each royal house, shall by God's fair ordinance conjoined together and reach the time to come with smooth face to peace and smile with plenty and fair prosperous days. Now so the wounds are stopped. Peace lives again and that she may long live here. God said.